I might seem like the odd man out here on this panel, you know, but while, while you all are reminding us of how difficult things are in the world and in America and the suffering, and I guess brings a little sadness to uh, all of us when we read and visualize it, I'm here to make you happy. <laughs> I have to make, put you in the mood so that you will accept the logic and the understanding and the guidance from people like David and Carrie. Um, and footwear or any other fashion product that gives you an uplifting spirit is basically made for that purpose. I would think that less than 5% of what is bought to be worn is bought to be worn solely for its function, but also for its, its beauty. And I thank you for confirming that wearable art is an art form. <laughs> I often make that point. And at that exhibit at the New York Historical Society, which is a collection of several hundred pairs of old shoes going back this 1700s, 18, 1900s, the flapper years, um, up to about the beginning of World War II, there's a lot to be learned. The first thing you can't miss is that the shoes even today, but going back then, were more so a reflection of who the person was that wore them. You could not wear, for example, in Louis XIV's court, a heel higher than he wore. By the way, ladies, he started the high heel. He was too <laughs> short for the rest of his, his court, and he wanted to tower over them. Um, and then there were heights that you'll see in the show that the queen could wear and other dukes and duchesses could wear. And don't you dare, I guess they would guillotine your foot to get rid of some of the height if you, if you violated those traditions. Um, and our industry, and I learned this in studying the footwear to present it, to curate it, our industry is the first industry to create a labor union for women called the Boot and Shoe Recorders Union of Lynn, Massachusetts, 1858, way before Gompers and all the union movement. And they prospered with it. And um, I remember the few years I had in my father's shoe factory in Haverhill, Massachusetts, as equal pay or more so for the women who stitched the shoes than the men who attached the heels. And that was because talent required for what they did was more important than training anyone to nail a heel on. Uh, and the union made that happen.